Well, good afternoon and thank you for starting the week with us. I'm Journey Taylor. Despite the fog and light showers that has clearly cleared up now, we do have to keep our eyes open. We're going to head straight over to meteorologist Nathan Scott. Good afternoon, Nathan. What should we start preparing for? Good afternoon, Journey. Out there this afternoon, we are seeing more sun, mm -hmm. and that is setting up the stage for the potential. We could see some strong, possibly severe thunderstorms bubbling up late this afternoon into this evening. Look at these numbers already getting close to 80 degrees here in the capital city because we're seeing more sun out there. It's 72 in Mina, 74 in Searcy, 77 in Camden. So we're already about 10 degrees warmer than this time yesterday when we just got so sopped in with clouds and rain. Uh, we have some warm and humid air really building its way in here from the south. So here's a radar loop right now. It's quiet, but I think that will be changing as a little upper level disturbance makes its way in here from the Red River Valley of Texas. Look what happens here on future clouds and radar. We'll have the chance of scattered showers and storms developing, especially down into southwest Arkansas. If you're watching us in Arkadelphia, Camden, Texarkana, be aware of that potential. There could be some storms that try to produce some hail. Then late tonight into early Tuesday morning, we're going to be watching a line move in here from Oklahoma. So here's a breakdown of the severe storm outlook. It's a one out of five for most of central Arkansas. A higher chance of severe weather in northwest Arkansas. Everybody has a three out of five risk of severe weather on Wednesday. Lots to talk about, and I'll try to break down everything you need to know coming up. All right, Nathan, thank you. With each passing day, we're seeing more growth in communities hit hard by that tragic tornado last year in March. One of those areas making progress is Breckenridge Village, where for the past year, businesses have been putting in overtime trying to get back on their feet. Representing that growth, a brand new sign in the shopping center. And according to business owners, these upgrades are a start of something new. Breckenridge 2.0, we're going to make this place bigger and better than ever in the shopping center as a whole. You know, Waldo's about to open up, DeLuca's around the corner, Mount Fuji's doing great. Uh, the center looks awesome, and that new sign just highlights it all. Last year's storm left hundreds displaced, but businesses at Breckenridge say it gave them an opportunity to come back better than before. Progress also being made on a long awaited decision regarding a casino in Pope County and today we could be one step closer to seeing that become a reality. It's something that can't happen until the Arkansas Racing Commission issues a license and act which they first received authorization for in 2018. But fast forward to 2023 when the Arkansas Supreme Court decided to reset the process of issuing licenses in Polk County, resulting in a string of events. Now, on March 11th, the Racing Commission approved new rule changes, allowing applications for Polk County as early as May. The Attorney General also approved a potential ballot question that could require any casino license to be voted on in a county election. Those actions leading to a meeting sometime today by the commission where they plan to review the casino application process for Pope County. Now, speaking of the ballot, November will be here before you know it, which means time is winding down for groups to get enough signatures for initiatives they want people to vote on. Organizers have just two months left to gain 90,000 signatures in order for their proposals to even be considered for November's ballot. Key issues they're fighting for span across abortion rights, medical marijuana access, and even education. A process some organizers say is key to democracy. It, it really is nonpartisan. If you believe in democracy, if you believe in voting, if you believe in the people rule, um, then you shouldn't have any issues signing these because they don't become law. They just get them on the ballot for us. And of course, those very people are in a fight against others who oppose those same views we just mentioned. We're well, turning now to a few crime alerts from over the weekend, starting in Saline County, where police are investigating a double homicide. The man on your screen here, 37 year old Brian Reed, who remains locked up without bond in connection to that shooting, police say they were called to a home in East End around 10 o'clock Saturday night where they found two people dead. It wasn't long after when police found and arrested Reed, charging him with first degree murder, among other serious charges. In Little Rock, one person is dead and another injured after a shooting late Friday night. Police say they were called to a home on South Pulaski and say two people were found shot after arriving. The second victim is expected to be okay, but we haven't received any word on the suspect or motive. 
Arkansas State Police hard at work keeping drugs off the street. Those efforts resulting in nearly 900 pounds of illegal marijuana being compensated in just the last 10 days alone. Police say they caught several of out of state drivers during six traffic stops coming from Oklahoma, Kentucky, North Carolina and even Los Angeles. The governor of South Dakota is releasing a new memoir and it's already causing quite the commotion. CBS's Nicole Skanga shares how Governor Kristi Noem is handling the criticism. South Dakota Republican Governor Kristi Noem is defending her book, No Going Back, which drew early criticism over a passage about killing her own dog. This book is filled with painful, vulnerable stories. Speaking on CBS Mornings, the governor said she shot her 14 month old wire haired pointer because it was a threat. Every state in the country has a law that allows what I did. When you have an animal that you as a mom, you have to decide, do I choose the safety of my children over an aggressive animal that will attacks people? The conservative politician was less forthcoming about another anecdote in the book where she recalled meeting North Korean dictator Kim Jong Un. The publisher posted on social media that the passage is being removed, but Nome wouldn't clarify whether the encounter actually occurred. It's a simple question. Did you or did you not? That's meet with that's Kim that's the answer that I have for you is that I'm it will be adjusted. And as soon as I became aware of it, that content was removed. Nome hit back at former UN ambassador and GOP presidential candidate Nikki Haley over differing characterizations of a phone call between them. She's the person who said I'm never going to run against Donald Trump and then runs against Donald Trump and says one thing and then does another. It's pretty consistent. It's Previously mentioned on short lists as Donald Trump searches for a running mate, it's unclear how Nome's book has impacted her vice presidential prospects. Nicole Skanga, CBS News, Washington. Tensions don't seem to be calming anytime soon in the Middle East, where talks of a ceasefire continue to stall between Israel and Hamas. The Israeli military say at least three of their soldiers died as a result from airstrikes launched by Hamas. That attack further weakening the idea of halting military efforts on both sides. Today, the U.S. CIA director is headed overseas to meet with those leaders in hopes of talking through some of that resolutions. Back here in central Arkansas, there's going to be a few changes to your I-30 commute and some start as early as today. In order to make much needed improvements, RDOT will implement several lane closures, mostly during the times you see here. So starting today, some lanes will be closed during 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Overnight lanes close between 8 at night to 5 in the morning and weekend closures will happen from 10 p.m. through 5 a.m. until next Monday. That might be a lot to take in all at once, but as always, we've made things easier for you to break down for a detailed look at which lanes will close during those what times. All you have to do is find this story on THV11.com or just open the THV11 app. Starting tomorrow, veterans will have a chance to expose themselves to new career opportunities during a two day hiring event. Supporting those who served is the main goal here. The big event kicks off at nine in the morning, lasting until three o'clock, both tomorrow and Wednesday at First Pentecostal Church in North Little Rock. That's where veterans and their families can connect with a handful of opportunity of transition into civilian life. And a former member and a member from the Little Rock Nine is being recognized with a statue at the U.S. Capitol. In addition to her time advocating for integration in Little Rock, Daisy Bates was the first woman to formally address the 1963 March on Washington and will be the 13th woman to represent it to be represented in D.C.'s collection. Okay. Going on vacation isn't something that comes cheap. Coming up. While more Americans say they'll risk going into debt to enjoy some relaxation. <laughs> and we are warming things up out there, Journey. It's also very humid. That's going to set up the stage for the potential of maybe some strong storms this afternoon. But over the next few days, we've got active weather to talk about. The best chance of severe weather, I think, is going to be on Wednesday. I'll explain why that's the case coming up.